All right, we good? We good? Oh, we should be good. We should be good. Oops, oops. Okay, I was muted. My bad. So, Chupi, as I was saying, welcome to the show. Anybody else watching? Let me know about the volume, please. Um, if Slay needs to be higher or I need to be higher or anything, let me know, please. Um, so, yeah, welcome to A Slice of Life. This is our first episode. Um, so, this show used to be... I basically interview Smash players in San Diego while we play Smash, trying to get their honest answers. It's like an interview, kind of like hot ones. That's what I was trying to get at. But uh, with the pandemic going on, I can't really have anybody over. Um, oh, thank you, Chubby. Audio seems fine, okay. So with the pandemic going on, I can't really have anybody over. So, um, And I also, I really hate Smash Online. So that's why, that's one of the reasons, the, big, ma the main reason for me why I want to do something like this, a show like this. Um, and also because I really enjoy talking to my friend Slane here. I feel like we, we both connect and we have um, a mindset that people might find helpful, especially in these times in 2020. Um, so yeah, Slane, you want to introduce yourself? I, I think everybody knows you, but just in case. How could they not know me? <laughs> All right. <laughs> what is up, everybody in the chat? It's your boy Slane, captain of the O2 squad himself. But in this life, I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well I mean... The audience is going to be the judge of that. What if, what if we, while talking, we just find out that we have depression? We're like really failing at life. We're like we're down in our, in our last leg. What if we really need therapy? I have, yeah. I know I have depression and I know I need therapy, but the difference is, like, once you get past that step of realization, it's like you. It's not that you don't care anymore, but you you help yourself. Mm-hmm. Volume, what's up? Yeah, let me know if that's yep. not getting lit. <laughs> so I turned them up not a little bit. Lit. Let me know, Chupi, if that's better. I turned them up a little bit. Maybe I need to turn them up more. Can the people hear me? Yeah, yeah, they can um, hear you. Okay, yeah. And then another thing, too, is I'm, I'm starting out this volume now. But as, as I talk longer, I progressively get louder. It's just something. It's a habit I've had my entire life. So um, I'm trying to start low now. So as I get more energetic, yeah, I'll better. get louder and uh, it'll be um, <laughs> probably turning back now. Hey, so we got Chupi, Akemi, what up? All right, Slane, you want to dive into the first topic? All right, yeah, man, let's do it. Well, let's, let's see. The first topic is, does money buy happiness? I was talking about this um, not too long ago with um, my work wife. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my answer for this is yes, absolutely. You can, you can absolutely buy happiness. Because like it, once you truly know yourself, you don't even have to just be super like super self-reflective. But when you know the things you like and the things you enjoy, spending like if you have the money to spend on those things, it only enhances your your love for those things. Like for example, right? Um, I was telling her like if I want to take a girl out, right? And if if I don't have money, yeah, we can go out, we can have a good time, we can still have a, a cheap date and be happy. Or if I can have money, we can have a better date and then we'll still be happy, if not happier, because I, I had the money to to buy that happiness. So it's like, can you directly buy happiness as a transaction? Like, no, but money does buy happiness once you understand that like it's not a trans it's, it's not a direct transaction. It's more transitive. Yeah, I feel like so you basically said that money enhances can enhance your life, but it shouldn't be your life. Because a lot of people, especially um, with TikTok, with all social media, I know I'm sounding like a like an 80 year old, but but with TikTok and social media the and all TikTok. that, <laughs> people really just post the best parts about their life. And do you agree with that? Um, usually, well, yeah, like it's people. People typically want to put their their best foot forward in life always. So social media, like, is never a direct reflection of someone's entire life, just a spotlight of it they want you to see. And then typically that's no, that's that that's that better side of it that they're putting forward because they want they want people to feel like happy for them. And then that feeling from those people generates their own internal happiness. That validation is what they're seeking. Yeah, I feel like that that's the whole point of social media. Those likes people just farm those likes. They feel like that brings happiness. Um, I think it's the same thing with money, honestly, because. So I know some people, um, I've talked to them, and uh, like one of my friends, he's really into, he wants to um, have a job to get money, and then he actually believes 
that money is going to bring happiness to his life forever. Um, and I, I, cause I, when, when you're a kid, you don't know much. You feel like, oh, I can just have a giant pool in my backyard, get a nice car, get, have everything in life. And that's true. Yeah, you'll have everything. But like you get tired of it. You get life is not just a, I don't know, just a one answer. Like you, everybody has the answer. No, life is different. It's uh, it's harder than that. Um, so I think money, money can buy happiness, but it's not permanent happiness. It's trying to get what I'm trying to get at. Well, I think um, I think another side of that coin is goals, because if you if you're just trying to buy happiness and then you get that thing that you predetermined would make you happy, then, yeah, like you're, you're happy for that while. But now you don't have any any goals anymore. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's going to be a constant stream of things. So it's like um, if you want a big house, right, that'll make you happy. Well, once you buy the big house, now what do you do? You have to figure out what else makes you happy. And if you have money for that, it's only going to make it easier to do versus you buy the big house and it makes you happy for a while. And well, now you don't have any more money. And now you want, you know, you want to share the big house with somebody or you want to get a dog or you want to, you know, so you want to have kids and now you don't have the money for it. So now you've, you can't reach the next step of your happiness because you don't have the money to do so. Yeah. Also, so in the- that's just money. Yeah. That's just money management, though. Like, you, uh, bad money management will cause unhappiness very quickly. Yeah. Also, I just wanted to say one thing in the chat. Let us know if you have any questions or if you want to give your input. Um, we'd love to have that so we can have a little chat after we discuss our, our thoughts. Um, also, if, feel free to ask us any question. I mean, I'm open to anything. Um, I don't know about Slane. I think he's an open book as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, have, I have no secrets. I have no dirt. Like, I... This is kind of something I pride myself on is anybody can ask me anything and you'll get like a 100% genuine answer. You might not like that answer, but you'll get it. No, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you like that. You're straight up like you don't you don't play around. You just tell them the truth. Um, uh, and I, I used to um, when I was in high school, I used to be really like that. Like I used to be kind of mean. Um, but now I've realized some, sometimes. I actually don't speak my mind because it might be might help, uh, hurt others. But I'm I'm never gonna lie. Like that's one thing that I, like I said, like you said, you pride yourself. I pride myself in that. I I'm never gonna lie to your face. I'm gonna tell you, um, mm-hmm. if if you have an ugly sweater. Like that's a super minor example. I'm not gonna tell be like, <laughs> hey, this guy has an ugly sweater. No, I'm gonna tell you straight up, and it's your sweater. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially when I'm drunk. That's when I really spill the tea. Oh yeah. T- talking about that, I'm gonna be uh, drinking. Something that may or may not be alcoholic. You can do the same if you'd like. I have um, my my non-alcoholic sweet tea here <laughs> that I'll be... Um... Your stash ran out, I'm guessing. Yeah, we were we were low. I didn't realize it in time. <laughs> yeah, we got uh, Kemi telling us that we're old. I mean... Is uh, that toast? Yeah, that's toast. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, is that a question? Yeah, that is Why a question. Are Why are you both old? old? I'm... I'm 25 years old, but I have the body of a 40-year-old, all right? The military has sapped all of my youth, all of my strength, and <laughs> once I'm done a month from now, I'll I'll be questing for the fountain of youth to get it back. <laughs> Yo, a slice of life quarantine edition. Yo, that's true. Hey, Rasu. Um, What was I saying? Uh, oh, yeah, that, I was going to say, it's cool that we basically are the same age, like just five days apart. That's pretty crazy. Oh, that's sick, man. Are you older than me or younger than me? I'm older by five days. Five days? Okay, so you're the 21st. Mm-hmm. Let's go. I think you and Rezu share this. No, Rezu is the 23rd, I believe. We're all in the same. Um, all right, so... Oh, no, nobody birthday. All right, all right, chat. Long story short, does money buy happiness? Um, there is no no short answer, but I'm, I'm, I'm like... If, if 50% is in the middle of no and yes, I'm like... 60% yes because of what we said it enhances your life you can't live life without money because then you're just homeless out in the street and that's not happiness um, but yeah Colin hey any any last thoughts on, on this question Sling? I still say yeah I say 100% money buys happiness because with money you have you're a lot of certain freedoms and nothing is happier than freedom to do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it like I've been, I've been independent and self-sufficient since I was 18 years old, 
and I've never looked back. Like I've I've never had to think about moving back in with my parents. I've never had to worry about you know just over overbearing debt. I've never had to worry about where my next meal would come from, all because I have money, and that that makes me really happy. Like when I first met you guys like five years ago, um, when I first came to San Diego, I didn't I didn't know anybody out here. I didn't really have any anything to do other than to go to Smash tournaments. So that's what I did. Like, I spent like fifty dollars a week going to 10 different smash tournaments a week and that made me happy and then i met you guys and then that made me happy and like as we got to know each other we were like we would go out drinking we would go to casinos we would just do all these activities vegas. and i would go to yeah like <laughs> even vegas like all of these things that we just come to cherish and be happy from like just stemmed from i feel like money yeah i, I actually i wanted to say one more thing about that question um so there's a lot of, especially in, in Mexico and in, in Spanish music, there's a lot of songs that the message of the song is basically when you die, you can't take that with you. And I, I'm guessing there's a lot of songs in English as well. But that's a big thing in Spanish music that everything you take to the grave, everything you earned in your life, you're not going to take it to the grave. Um, but it, I think that kind of goes both ways because it tells you that, okay, life is short. You got to enjoy it, do everything. And then you die. And maybe it's worth it. But then other people are like, no, you, you can't just focus your whole life just trying to get money because then you die and then you can't get anything from it. But I, I feel like it, it goes both ways. What do you think about that? Well, um, I think money shouldn't be like the focal point of your life. I think like having ways to earn money should always be supplementary to whatever you have envisioned for your life. So like um, if you want to travel, if you want to learn new skills, or even if you, if you just want to just have a, a nice relaxed life where you don't have to worry, I feel like that's a very underrated goal that a lot of people have that kind of doesn't get talked about is some people like they don't want to live a luxurious life, but they don't want to live a hard life. They want to just get through life, not have to worry and just live. So um, can you take it with you? No. But with me, like I'm, I'm non-religious. I, so I don't believe in like um, any particular religion. But I do research a lot of different ones. So like, like Mexican music, they say you can't take it with you. Hindus believe you do reincarnate uh, based on like the quality of life you live. And even like um, the ancient Egyptians, they would bury their dead with their belongings and their people, like all their slaves. They buried them along with their pharaohs because they believe like once you got to the to the afterlife and you were judged like your wealth ultimately determined what happened to you after your life so money is kind of just i said it's not a fo i don't think i don't think money should be the focal point of anyone's life or afterlife planning i just think money is a conduit that makes life easier makes life harder or uh, it, it can make life easier or make life harder just depending on um how you use it yeah um, hey, Oreos in chat. What's up? Um, I also wanted to go back into that to what you said about uh, moving out when you're 18, because I feel like we. Mm -hmm. I, I'm super proud of that as well. Um, we're both. Uh, we both have that mentality because I also moved out when I was 18, and I, I, I honestly, I'm, I'm like you. I haven't looked back since. Um, every time somebody is trying to move out of their parents' house, I always encourage it. I always say yes, and if you need any help, any advice, let me know. Because I, I honestly believe that being independent, um, not just financially, but like even the fact that you live in your own house, it's your house, you can go to sleep whenever you want. You don't have to tell mm -hmm. your parents, hey, I'm going to go out. You can just go out. Like that feeling is priceless. That's Yeah, like and, that, that freedom, like mm -hmm. that freedom is what ultimately causes happiness. And mm -hmm. I just think like money is the best conduit for that freedom. I say being able to come and go as you want, even like having a car, something as simple as having your own transportation, being able to come and go whenever you want, don't have to worry about being stranded anywhere. Like you can, it's, it's just that freedom. Yeah. Um, and we were talking about this off stream, but uh, we can talk about it in the next stream or if we get to it. Uh, but one thing I really am passionate about is basically educating people, kids, when, when, you're, when you're 18 or less, the fact that how you do in high school really shapes shapes your whole life. Unless those examples where you go viral and then you get a bunch of money, like those TikTokers, um, that's, an, that's an exception. So you don't have to go to college. You can do whatever you want. But yeah, that's a, I feel like people, mm -hmm. people see social media like 
influencers and they think that anybody can do that but it's it's not you can't it's, it's hard there's an extremely small one percent of the population who they're fortunate enough to um to blow up big off something like that like even like with like with me and you like just being small streamers like i'm like we all had dreams once upon a time of you know like we're gonna we're gonna get on twitch and just grow our audience and have like five thousand people watching me to like just play games and i'm gonna i, I didn't i never even wanted to be big i just wanted to yeah, have me neither <laughs> like a, a following you know people know my name like i walk into a, a venue and people say oh look they're slaying it's like but no I, I i do think um education and um money management is super important to to teach the youth and i even like to my brothers i um i i'll, I'll let them know like anybody can come talk to me and i'll teach you everything i know about money i'm pretty good with money I'm good with um saving and handling money putting money where it needs to go to make sure you don't um waste it or like just need it later yeah i've seen you gamble at vegas and you're still here you still have a house it's fine <laughs> i'm able to gamble because i'm good with money all right <laughs> <laughs> all right if any if nobody has any other questions in chat about this question we're gonna move on so yeah like i said just feel free to uh, give us your input or ask us any personal questions any questions at all so let's go on to the second question, which I've seen you post a lot about on social media throughout these years of me I knowing you. I post a lot of shit on You used to. Media. You used to on Facebook especially. So let me read it out loud. Are men allowed to show emotions? And you can, you can explain it however you want, interpret it however you want. Okay. So this question is kind of loaded. Um, hang on, I'm making so much business. So yeah, this question is kind of loaded. Is are men allowed to show emotions? When I speak about this, I usually speak about this from a relationship perspective of where um, women want men to be more open and communicative with their emotions and their emotional integrity. And at the same time, you hear a lot of men say, like, um, women want this thing, but whenever they get it, they, they weaponize it. They use it as, like, as fuel in the future. So I personally, I don't show, I do my best to not show like emotions or I don't really express my emotions in a productive manner just because I don't want anyone to weaponize it or use it against me in the future. Like it's, it's, it's almost a fetish at this point to where women, like they say they want an emotionally open man and, but when they get one or when they see one, they don't know what to do with it. Um... Like not too long ago on Twitter, like where I post all of my shit. <laughs> um, what happened? There was a guy. No, it was a post of uh, saying a girl yeah. be complaining the fact that her boyfriend was like, "Do you love me? Do you love me?" Wasn't it that? Oh, I think that was the one. It was the um, it was a guy in a relationship, and he just wanted some some affirmation. He was like, "Like, why do you like me? Like, what what about me? Like, does it for you? Just stuff like that." And she was annoyed that he would bring that up like as often as he would. But it's like, this is what you wanted, right? Like, you want a man to be open with his emotions with you. And when that, with emotions comes the negative ones, such as, like, insecurity and just need. So, like, whenever a man is needy or emotional like that, the negative emotions are never, you know, glorified or wanted. It's always the, like, when women say they want an emotionally open man, they usually mean trauma. Like they want somebody <laughs> to talk to them about the things that they deal with and then have them be the only one like that they talk to about the things that they're dealing with. It's never really about the emotions themselves. It's about the woman wanting to feel unique with those emotions. I see. Yeah, yeah. This, this question is... Uh, honestly, I can't relate. Uh, the fact that I think... Let me go back to my first point. So I think... In this society, in society, in social media, in today's world, there is a stigma that men are supposed to not have emotions. They're supposed to be the strong one in the relationship. But that that I think that was stronger back then. We're moving forward in a in a direction where both the man and the woman, or man man, woman woman, the the partners in the relationship can both show some emotion, some uh, vulnerability. So we're, we're beyond, I think my, when my parents' uh, generation, they were the ones who were like, no, the man has to provide 
um, emotional, not really emotional support because they expect him to just be like, yeah, yeah, I'm the man, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. More than nowadays, in my opinion. Um, but are, are men allowed to show emotions? Honestly, like I said, I think if we're going in the direction that yes, but I don't think we're there yet. I, I think one of the examples you said in the, in the first question was when you go on a, on a date, let's say, for example, you're a straight male, you find a girl on Tinder, like who's going to pay for the mm-hmm. date? Who's going to ask like these emotional questions more? It's usually the woman in, in a relationship like that. Um, so I think that stigma is still there. Um, and I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a, it, it, it just depends on everybody. It's, I don't know, there's no right answer for this, but, but I see your point. Another thing too, I, that I personally think is women don't understand like how men communicate their emotions. I think men, men are way more emotional than women. Like what the, the emotional strength it takes to be a woman, particularly a woman in America is profound like women like yeah it's just women women are just they're just so emotionally strong because they have to be but can you explain that men can you explain that a little bit more like what do you Um, examples or what do you mean so like when you know like women live in constant fear right just out of like just of men oh yeah like yeah so like can you just imagine what life would be like if every aspect of your life contained like a fear that at any point something could happen to you just because you're a woman or like just because you're a man and someone like like this is so dumb so i yeah. um like woman can't go out on a walk when it's dark outside like that yeah like right now it gets dark at 6 30 now and like you think women like want to be outside right now like probably not it's dark as fuck out there but um back to my original point is um i think men are more emotional than women we just communicate it differently like uh like me for example right like i i go through emotional mood swings a lot but the way i express them is not really in words like i'll never just walk to somebody and be like hey man i'm i'm feeling kind of you know feeling kind of down today and then five minutes later it's like hey man i'm feeling kind of up you want to go do something like nah, i'm not gonna talk about it but you can you will see it clearly through my actions to where like one minute i'll be in my room and then the next, like, five minutes from now, I'll be in the living room. Five minutes from then, I'll go sit in the car. Five minutes from then, I'm back in my room. And I don't think that women really understand that, you know, the way that men communicate their emotions is nonverbal. So whenever a mm. woman says they want a man to communicate emotionally or be um, emotionally open, they're just missing the signs. I because, see. Because, yeah, like, even, like, with me and my brothers, is like, I'm I'm the only one who's single. Like both of them have girlfriends, and like the way they interact with their women, is like I I recognize the like the the subtle differences, like the the tone in his voice when he speaks, when he's happy versus when he's you know feeling down for the day, or when he's doing something because he wants to, or when he's doing something because he has to for her, and um, I so said I notice those things, but I feel like because it's nonverbal, she doesn't, and it leads to. Arguments. Like I said, that, that misrepresentation that he's not emotional. Mm-hmm. You you and live those, with your brothers, right? Or I, I know your brother for sure, Face. Yeah, my blood brother, Um, he moved out. He lived with his girl now. They're happy. And Josh is my brother. By um, He's my best friend, but he's my brother because he ain't going nowhere without me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he, he's in the back room yelling at Apex right now. <laughs> Yeah, right. we know. Men are scared. To- men are trash. Just, yeah, and Colin <laughs> saying men are big babies. And yeah, I agree, Toast. As a woman, I can see how like that would be scary because uh, a lot of men are creeps, and you're not lying about that. <laughs> and then another thing, too, like, with my men? Men? Men display their emotions, like, so outwardly. And it can be, it gets to the point where, like, extreme emotion, like anger, fear, or depression... Like at the most extreme level, you will see women they'll cry. Like when a woman is really like extremely emotional, she'll cry, she'll break down, she'll kind of retreat within herself. But men is like we're the exact opposite. We lash out with everything. Like when we're angry, we don't we don't internalize every like we're mad at everything in the vicinity. And you see that a lot with like dating or like even like in terms of like rejection. 
like this is why women live in constant fears because um they know like if you when they tell a man no or when they reject a man if he gets extremely emotional he's going to project outward and that generates fear for them so it's like it's just really trash for lack of a better word <laughs> yeah i think once both both partners like they they get to know each other they get to know how both of them react to different scenarios that's when you can actually start to build a solid relationship because before that there's a honeymoon phase that's like phase one um actually before we get into that that's like question number six so we'll, we'll get to that eventually <laughs> so uh yeah, yeah that's cool so I think that's, uh, unless you want to add anything else, I think we're done with this question. Unless anybody else wants to jump in as well. No, I think we're done. We're here. Are men allowed to show emotions? In a nutshell, no. Like, <laughs> because the way that we project our emotions aren't isn't accepted by the people who want us to, to display the emotion. So mm -hmm. until men and women find a common ground of communication, men will never be able to express their emotions the way they want to or the way that they're expecting us to. I agree with the Kemi. She said men show their anger, but when it comes to their feelings mentally, they like never show it because it's like looked down upon. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. And that's why it makes exactly. it makes you bottle up your emotions and then you explode, and that makes it even worse. <laughs> I'm a, I'm gonna spit something real quick. Like for for most men, I would say a good majority of men, and this kind of goes into a question for later too. Oh wait, you took it out. Okay, yeah. For a good majority of men, right? One of our most latent emotions is fear because everything taught to us from the time that we're born is, you know, to be manly is to, to be brave, to be courageous, to, to laugh in the face of danger and like to spit in the face of fear. But men, like when it comes to fear, what was I saying? I lost that entire train of thought. Oh yeah. Um, for fear, like no man is ever allowed to admit that he's afraid of anything. That's why we have so much mental, you know, um, disability in men, and specifically black men. But we're not talking about black men, but in men. No, you can. Um, it's your perspective. Yeah, yeah just just that that fear of being seen as weak, like, is a, an unconscious drive for a vast majority of men. Like, a lot of the actions we do, a lot of personalities that you see, and a lot of, you know, word choice, that men use is all just bundled upon I don't want to look weak. I don't want to look fearful. I don't want to be looked down upon by anybody who knows me. And that's probably like the biggest emotion men have is that that feeling of um, you know that of courage of that lack of fear mm -hmm. so to say is like, how do you no one wants to communicate that. Like, look, I'm feeling kind of vulnerable right now. I'm feeling kind of weak right now. Like, I don't want to do a thing because I'm afraid of the repercussions that that, that those actions will have. No, no man wants to admit that, and that that they just they ultimately internalize it. And when it comes to communicating that feeling, it's never really verbal. It's more it's action. It's like, uh, I don't want to do this thing because I'm afraid of the consequences. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get drunk, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I'm gonna do it, and then I'll cancel at the last minute. They're gonna be upset, but they'll understand, and they won't think, you know, that I'm being afraid, you know. Yeah, um, I agree with Colin. He says that basically, if you have a supportive friend group, you can open up to them and talk about it with them. Um, but usually, you gotta save those feelings for when you're in private, and that's true. Um, I completely agree with that. But that's, I think that last part goes for both men and women. Um, because they also, like, but I think women support themselves, like, let's, for example, two women, they are going to support each other mentally, and and uh, they're going to care about their mental health more than two, especially, I don't know, two guys, from my perspective. Um, and Akemi, yeah, absolutely. Akemi is saying that some men still don't open up no matter what, no matter how that's supportive bad. their friends group are, and it just makes it worse, and that's true. That's facts. Look, there there are some parts of me that my friends will never know. Like my there's parts of me that my brothers don't know, and I'll never tell them just because it's not that I'm afraid or I don't want to know how they feel about the way I feel about that thing. It's just it's private. Mm -hmm. Some things are private, you know. Some things are just some things are just destined to be internalized forever. 
Yeah, and it's just something you deal with. And that that's true. Hey, Linky, what's up? Um, I agree with what uh, Ben is saying in the chat that men have a hard time talking about their emotions, and that's true. Women are, are very open. Some of them we can't just generalize, but that's true. It's usually women are more open than than, than men um, to share their emotions, especially with their friend group. <laughs> yeah, nudge, nudge. <laughs> when it comes to speaking too much, I speak like when it comes to certain topics, I speak really generally because if we're gonna talk about oh, you can't judge all men or all women, it's like I'm not. Like when I say men or women, I'm I'm just addressing the ones that I'm talking about. It's implied that I'm not speaking on every single individual person because everyone's different, everyone thinks differently, everyone has their own personality and way of life. I just wanted that's to kinda, do... that's something I learned from Twitter. That's something I learned from Twitter from women actually. Is whenever they say like men, it's not one hundred percent of you know penis possessing males on the earth. It's strictly the group that they're talking about because it's implied that every single person like you know i i can't speak about every single person it's just impossible yeah um i just want to give a so we're i think we're done with this question unless more people want to share their opinion and and thank you for you yeah. guys for sharing um i i just want to give a quick, quick shout out to straight poning 60 thank you for the follow uh please men 1m thank you for the follow and grimbone thank you for the follow um, just feel free to share your thoughts and uh, ask us any questions. We're open. We're an open book, especially with uh, with alcohol. <laughs> Toast, um, you're not too open. I don't know anything about you. Uh, yeah, we I, honestly, Toast. Um, I don't know you in a personal level like that, but I can see how you you are more open than other people. I've seen that before. I've never even seen your face, Toast. I've... <laughs> <laughs> and that's true, right, Colin. Well, I just want to address this. So he, Colin basically mm -hmm. says that a lot of people don't like talking about nerd stuff. Um, wait, for some, they don't like talking about nerd stuff. Like, I've met tons of closest closet weebs. Okay, that's another issue. <laughs> the that's weeb an issue. That's a, topic, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to move on to, hopefully this works. I'm going to try to open up this link, and we're going to talk about this Twitter post. Are you going to show the video? Yeah, uh, let me know if you guys can hear it. If you guys can, oh, you guys can see it. Okay, cool. <laughs> this is gonna be funny. It's our first time doing this show, so sorry about the, the it's delay. It's super raggedy, but look, yeah. we're getting through it. Go we'll get through it. Um, I'm pulling it down. Actually, it's not working. Oh, okay, I got it. All right, can you guys? See this? Um, you, they can't see the top of it. Hopefully, you guys can read that. I, I made it better. Oh, you went to this one first. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So basically, somebody is saying in a tweet, they said dates aren't about money, but let's change it to first dates. So they're saying first dates aren't about money; it's about connecting. And that's—is uh, this from a guy or a girl? I, think, I do not know. Oh, his daddy Dom is probably a girl. Probably a simp. No, I think it's a guy. <laughs> Look at his face. Probably a simp. Probably some guy. Yeah. <laughs> no offense to Daddy Dom, but so basically we're gonna talk about it. So first dates aren't about money; it's about connecting. Um, so you can I'll refer to your. Go. Okay. Um, honestly, I I can't share my my uh my experience because I really don't have an experience. Uh, an, I don't really date. Um, I had like me and Gabby have been going out since 2012, so I don't. <laughs> She's laughing over there. Um. So I don't have much experience in the dating scene and all that, but I I, could, I super agree with you, Slane. I think first dates, usually the woman is the one who's gonna judge the the man, if it's a straight straight couple like that. the The woman is gonna uh, judge the man of basically if he paid for the for the for the meal, where'd you guys go for a restaurant? Um, if he got mad for paying, or did he, did he like? seem a little mad that he paid for the meal no women are usually especially on tinder and all, all those apps i'm guessing i haven't used it but i'm guessing women just sometimes they just want a free meal and they go on a date with a guy just to get a free meal out of it and um so i think first dates aren't really about money it's about connecting i don't agree with that because once you get to know them and establish a solid once you get to to know the person more then you can really start connecting because you can't i don't think it's possible to really connect on the first date there might be a spark yeah sure 
Um, uh, and I agree with that, but connecting like that, I think that happens after the first date. What do you think? Okay, so let's see. He said, dates aren't about money, it's about connecting. When I first like, read this, my brain just automatically interpreted that as, as first date. And that's why I was so opposed to that, that tweet. So, like, looking back on it, this was kind of a mistake on my part, just from the misunderstanding that, you know, yeah, dates in and of themselves are, yeah, they're about connecting and getting to know the person. But when it comes to first dates, I've, I've talked to so many different women, like, not even dating. Like, I've, my, my mom, my aunt, my cousins, and just on Twitter. I've talked to a lot of different women because I love learning from women. And a good majority of them will, will say that, you know, that first date, like, that impression that you leave on them will completely determine whether or not they see a relationship with you, just a friendship with you, or if they just ghost you all together. And money is typically the first thing that they noticed on that first date. Like, um, how like did you plan a date? Judging. Like, where did we go for the date? They're judging you. Like, how expensive is this date in relation to the lifestyle that they, that they currently live or expect to live with you? They're judging. So it was like all of those things and just in ourselves are they're they're rooted in money. Cause like, if I plan the first date and I'm like, hey, I want to get to know you, let's let's do like a, a picnic, let's do something like for free or outside. It's like, yeah. If you ain't got just like a super good personality, you're probably never gonna talk to that girl again. Whereas if you spend a little money, you know, take her to a nice restaurant, you throw on some some nice clothes, put on some nice clothes, go to a nice restaurant. You don't have to try as hard to connect on that date just because that lifestyle that she's seeing because of the money you spent, like it's that's what her primary focus was. Yeah, and I just want to uh, let so Grimbone, um, thank you for your question. We're gonna answer that after um, after we we finish expressing our thoughts and all that. So I'll keep that question in mind, okay? Um, Colin in the chat is uh, he's uh, showing he's telling us about his experience with that. Um, he actually had an opposite experience with what you said, I think, Slim. Um, right. and, and then Ben said it's okay to split the check on the first date. Um, I think I agree Absolutely. with that. Yeah, like. I think you absolutely you should you should have to spend split the check on the first date. Yeah. Cause I'm not cause I'm I'm not a free ride for nobody. Like, regardless of at what point in my life I meet you, like. <laughs> yeah, cause you gotta like, make if sure. If this is my first time hanging out, yeah. If this is my first time hanging out and I'm trying to connect with you the same way you're trying to connect with me, I'm not trying to be worried about you know like connecting with you on a financial level. I'm trying to make sure we connect personally. So like if I if I offer to pay for the date, that means you know I I see it as worth it. But I don't want anyone to ever go on a date with me and just expect, oh, you know, the, the dude should have to pay for the date because you're, you're paying for the woman's time. What? No, like, this is my time, too. Like, I'm also a human being. Like, I'm here. We got Jay in the chat. He, he's slain. Slain is here spitting, spitting facts. I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jay, you got to take notes. <laughs> you take that notes, get the sticky notes out, boys. So Colin, actually, he's saying that he experienced the opposite. Um, he went on a Tinder. A, Tinder is a is a is a weird place, a weird world. Um, so yeah, I could see how you would experience that with a with a woman there. Um, and Shupi was like, "Y'all get dates on Tinder." <laughs> I mean, yeah, Tinder, Tinder is it's weird because it's either I I think it's dates or sex, one of the two. There's no like in between, and uh, it's it's a weird place to be. Um, I yeah, I, I I wouldn't recommend it, but. I don't know. It's it's up to you. All. I would actually. Okay. Um, online dating, I feel like, has completely erased like that that first step in dating. Like by letting people choose like who to swipe left on or who to swipe right on, and potentially even who to match with, it eliminates you know that 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 social factor of you know you see somebody out in public and you kind of just walk up to them not knowing what's gonna happen, if they're gonna match your energy or anything. So, um, yeah, like, even though Tinder primarily is used for sex, I do think that, you know, Tinder and online dating is, um, is, an, is an upgraded option from previous dating, you know, where you're out with your boys, and I said, you see somebody, especially now, like, you know, with us being in a Smash community and all of the fucking weirdos who just are out in public, like, I don't want to be labeled as one of those weirdos just because I walked up to a girl and said, hey, and, like, I want to spend some time with you. No, like, mm-hmm. Yeah, Colin. Well, on Tinder, uh -huh. yeah, on Tinder, I, I have to like you. You have to like me 
and then it's agreed hey mutually we match like we like each other so now we can try to invest some time in each other and get to know each other i don't have to i don't have to worry about that fear factor of walking up and even uh, just that that public shame of you know being told no or her blowing up and being like you know just causing a scene just because you you approached her I'm like nah. yeah it definitely makes uh, a lot of people are scared of not scared but it, they find it harder to find uh, a, a partner like when you go to a park or something like it's not like the movies uh, usually it's, it's not like a girl is going to walk up to you and say hey let's go get a drink no it's, it's that happens in the movies not in real life so tinder has made it easier in that regard to get dates um but I, as uh i don't know i feel like to build a strong relationship with somebody i don't think tinder is usually the place to go i think i think friends or friends of friends i think that's that's a better path but then maybe you don't have that so then you only have tinder so that i guess that's okay um one thing that yeah, i wanted to friends single friends y'all trash <laughs> <laughs> uh, ben is saying that the first day is really the, the deciding factor whether it, it'll work out or not. Um, what do you think about that? Do you think that a first day that went bad is ever gonna make a um, make well, for that's a... kind of that's yeah. kind of where it boils down to individualism because um, so if the first date goes bad, it just depends. Like, did it go well enough that either of you are willing to try again, or was it just completely off the walls? If it was just completely off the walls, just terrible, then that wasn't gonna work out anyway. Yeah. But if it was just like a bad day, like you were nervous or you said the wrong thing at the wrong time or you made a joke and you don't know this person yet, so you don't know their humor and they didn't like the joke. Um, there's a lot of things that can individually go wrong just based on a person's preferences on a date. But it's kind of a, a balance of was the thing that went wrong so bad that it's it outweighs a future potential or is it redeemable for a second date? Oh, hey, Golfy. So we're talking about more specifically first dates. Um, whether you, you meet the person on Tinder, like we're talking about, or wherever. We're talking about like basically on the first date. Um, I, I think we all, all, a lot of us agree that usually um, you should, like it's okay to split the check. It's not nothing bad. Because then you get to see the the person for basically they if they expect you to pay for the check and buy you the best meal, go to the best restaurant, that's already a red flag in my opinion. Um, they want you to spend all this money on the first date without really knowing the person. I don't think that's that's healthy or smart. Um, but yeah, we're talking about that more specifically. Uh, meeting meeting somebody online, like you said, like Discord or anything. I mean, yeah, it, it's it, it's fine because. I don't know. I, I don't think it's that bad. I think this, I think online, um, especially in, in, in today's world, has made it easier for people to connect. And if you connect with them, you're going to find out, like, online or in person, you're going to find out either way, I believe. Kyle, and I feel you on those taking pictures thing, man. I'm so bad at taking pictures. Like, I, I just don't do it. So online is difficult for me also. I feel you. Oh, hey, Richie, what's up? I didn't see you there. It depends on the people. I agree. Um, all right, let's move on to the next one. Unless you got something else to say? I do not. Let's go, because this next one is fire. <laughs> it's funny. All right, let me know if you guys can, can see this little video. This next one is fire. <laughs> all right, we're going to show you guys like a little PowerPoint like at school. Pretend we're at, back at school. And I just brought out the, the big TV. It's a rainy day outside. I just brought the big TV. So let me see if you guys can see this. Teacher's hungover. We're going to watch the video. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me know if you guys can see. Oh, Arnim, what's up, dude? What are you doing? So we're doing a, like a little podcast, so we're just talking about different topics. Right now, we're going to talk about this little video, okay? Let me know if you guys can see it. I'm going to play it, and if you can hear it. It's just a, a song, so it doesn't matter if you hear it or not, but I'm going to play it. Three, two, one. <laughs>
This is so hilariously trash. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this white ass baby. <laughs> yeah, let, let me let me just pause it <laughs> at that. Okay. So basically the, the gist of this is uh a couple interracial couple, the girl looked white, I'm guessing the, the man was black, they were in a relationship, they broke up. During that time she said she I think she said in the video, I'm trying to find myself. I, I took time to find myself. During that time she became pregnant and then she told the guy and then the guy it basically the video says that they got back together for the baby and like what do you think about this lane? Like what? <laughs> Does this make any sense? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, look. I am praying, alright? I am praying that that video was posted for the sake of comedy. <laughs> I'm praying that video was posted for the sake of comedy. Wait, so wait, Jay, 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 no, I'm guessing the girl was white. I, I said the guy was black. I didn't say. Yeah. Yeah, clip clip it if you want. Black. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm hoping that that video was posted for the sake of comedy, but it brought up an opinion of mine that I was kind of raised into believing, and I'm just not sure why it's not a thing yet. I, I believe all babies should be paternity tested at birth. It's it literally there's no harm to the child in doing such, and it only has benefits. Uh, it can only benefit this child to know. Or for the parents to know whether or not that the father is the paternal father of the child at like at birth, because like I said whether it's yours or not, like you're, the father present, like that's whose name goes on the birth certificate. That's who's legally obligated for that child. So, for for a man to be bound to a child legally that's not paternally his, it's so fucking trash. And I just don't see why like it's <laughs> it's not a thing already like in in health like why do we not paternity test babies like at birth wait i didn't even just said that's a trend you talking about like it, it, wait it, the trend of somebody taking care of somebody else's baby like real or the video being fake no it's just uh, the video really they, they oh. use somebody else's baby yeah so oh okay, so it was fake so, but but it happens yeah, in real life for, for comedy. Okay, or but, for, for but the purposes. fact is, it happens in your life, and that's sad. Yeah, but the fact is, like, it happens in real life where you have men, like, even like, it's not, it's never even this extreme. It'll be like, um, hmm. an interracial couple, and the baby will come out, you know, mixed, but the father present isn't always the paternal father of the child, just because of, you know, um, human nature. And the, the things that come about from like the, the damaging things that come about when um, a relationship is built around a child and then you find out later that the father of the child isn't the paternal father of that child it's just completely avoidable yeah and that's that's heartbreaking for the for the man it's sad <laughs> like it's yeah, not the baby's it's... fault at all it's it's all it's the girl's fault in this scenario um and i don't even want like, i don't want to come off like i'm bashing women yeah because i don't um, I believe like there there are benefits for the women too to to know um the paternal um like who's the father of the child. Like I think it's, I just think it's it's so beneficial to simply just put, to to test the child at birth for the um, paternal father. Oh shit. Yeah, it's it's just so beneficial at birth to to paternity test the child versus the complications that can come about just from not doing it. I mean, yeah, there's no cons to it. Uh, uh, the only con would be that the woman lied to you and then you, yeah, you like decide to leave. Like, no. But that's, that's such a that's such a one-off. Yeah. Um, I, I can hear the echo. Are you, are you, do you have the stream on? Oh, no. Uh, I'm playing your audio through my speakers. I'll back up. Oh, my bad. Um, no, you're fine. Anybody else have any yeah, thoughts? That's... That's all I really got to say on it. Test your babies at birth to make sure it's yours because it'll cause a lot more benefits than it will problems if not. Yeah, that's a tough situation if, if it's like when if it happens for real. Um Yeah, especially if the baby's People all grown up. Huh? People fucking lie. Humans are yeah. trash. <laughs> Humans are so trash and people are lying just for no reason. So if you can 
do something that can avoid lies or just bring forth the truth and it's virtually cost free like i don't see any reason to not do it all right i guess we're going to move on to number five which is what are some ways you found to keep your relationship successful yeah that's a question i had for you because so i've been single a long time you've been committed for a long time so all of my views about relationships come from like the mentality of a, a single man mostly and I just wanted to get your opinion on like, what are some things that you've done like between like, you and Gabby that you found you know keep keep you guys just like relationship healthy because I feel like it, it would do me good to hear the things that have worked versus to be trying things and hoping that yeah um well, when I first saw the question, I, I thought you meant like friendships and all that. So that's why I'm not prepared. But I, I do, I can, I, I'm always happy to talk about this, this subject. If you have any advice, like I always love to give advice. Um, I, like we're not, nobody, I don't think nobody's a perfect couple. Um, but like, I think communication is number one. I know that's kind of cliche. Everybody says that. But even the little things like, just the fact that I told her, hey, I have a stream tomorrow. Um and I guess we can't watch a movie tonight. She appreciated that. Just the super little things. Um, if I'm going to Vegas with you guys, like, yeah, I'm never going to say I'm going somewhere else. Like, I'm never going to lie. Like, lying is it's, it's a big red flag. It's GG from there. Um, but you just got to communicate with, with your partner. Um, and, and more than that, it's... I, I, one thing that I really believe in is that there, there are no soulmates. Like, you make your soulmates. Um, oh, absolutely. And and I don't know if anybody else anybody else agrees with that in chat, but like, I think you have to build a relationship. You have to build something much greater than both of you, and that comes with time. That comes with trust. That comes with a lot of things. But in the movies, oh yeah, the girl meets a guy or the guy meets a girl or whatever. They meet and then all of a sudden, like, they're in love. Like, no, that's not really love. If your relationship. For example, you're in the, um, what's it called? Are you in the Army or Navy? or Sorry, I, I oh, Navy. Navy, okay. I'm Navy, yeah. So all, the, all, all your colleagues, I'm guessing, among, all, a lot of them have proposed on their, what, first date? And that's an that's a exaggeration, but I know a lot of them do propose really soon in their relationship. And Look, man, I, we, we do it for money, all right? It's no, and I agree, but I hate it. You're trying to buy the happiness. And I, and I hate the fact that these girls or these guys, whatever, they go on, on social media and say it's love. Or when I meet a couple and I know they're just met and they post like this, P, they, they show so much PDA, they, they post about themselves so much on social media. I just hate that. And I, I don't think that's, from what I've seen, that's never worked out in every relationship that I've seen ever. If, if, if too much PDA is uh, is being shown or you both post about each other with hearts every single day, blah, 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 that relationship literally has never lasted that I've seen. Maybe it does. Yeah, sure. But I think that's, that's a red flag because you need to um, focus more on your relationship and your partner rather than social media because, like we talked about before, social media is all about the likes. It's all about the... the the be showing yourself as uh, having everything in life, being happy, showing yourself happy um, during happy moments and all that. And you can do whatever you want with social media, but it's not healthy when you keep doing that because eventually I've seen so many couples erase all those posts overnight and then everybody knows that they broke up. And it's, it's kind of embarrassing, honestly. Um, and that's one thing that me and Gabby agreed on, like when we first started dating, that we're not going to, like... Um, show we're not going to put our relationship out there that that way like yeah i i posted a picture when when we got engaged i posted a picture when we moved into our first to this apartment like yeah th those big moments but it, I, this is all my opinion you don't have to believe me in, or no, no, go ahead, yeah. right. so this is all on me and like we, that's one thing that we agreed on it's worked out and it's it's, it's honestly worked out because like i said th those couples that do all that that's not really true love true love is what you build with that person um, and I was watching a show recently, it's called The Good Place, uh, we just finished it, and that, that's one of the things that stuck to me, because in that show, um, it's, it's a minor spoiler, I guess, but, like, there's, basically, there's, they're soulmates, and then everybody says, oh, yeah, you're my soulmate, whatever you are, and then, um, 
later they find out that they don't really vibe together and they've been together for literally years and years and years um and then and then all of a sudden somebody comes up somebody above them that knows more comes and tells him that soulmates are actually made they're not actually real um and that's one thing that stuck to me from that show and i i completely agree um so i think going back to the question um communication is number one number two i guess in one way not uh not showing that much on social media you can you can do it maybe it's worked out for others but like i'm talking about those couples that post every minute about them themselves um that never works out and i guess number three um would be just trying to build something together trying to push each other be trying try to push push each other sorry um because in my experience like me and gabby we started going out in high school and we helped each other um get our high school diploma graduate from high school then when, when it came to college we pushed each other by studying together we we got our degrees and we were never like like for for a lot of a lot of uh women um I'm, like yeah for example they they say oh the guy the my man is going to provide for me and i think it's more life is more is better way better when both of you guys work together and try to push each other um and that's when it really works out i think because now we both got our degrees and now we both have our own jobs our career and now we both have our apartment and we're we're happy honestly and that's what really that's that's what works out because you can't just have a have a one-sided relationship even with financials right. even with emotional stability all those things you need to balance it out and and be together on the same page um but yeah that's that's my uh that's my opinion I value that. I value that. I respect all. Of, I respect everything you said. Um, so I, I, I can't answer this question definitely myself because I don't have a successful relationship. Um, my, my longest relationship was my high school sweetheart for like two and a half years, and then that didn't work out because of um, traumatic reasons. But um, yeah, I think just like just from looking at you and Gabby, and then and um the other successful relationships I've seen. Um, definitely communication has been a, a very high, um, highly valued asset, as well as like trust, like being able to trust your partner above everything else is invaluable and consistency, mm -hmm. like just doing what you say you're going to do it, like you're doing what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it, um, maintaining the same um, kind of life structure that um, you've been living and even like in terms of like progress, like you you never want to regress as a person. Like you may regress in life just because of reasons, but you never want to regress as a person. You always want to you know make those those bounds forward. And um, yeah, I think those things in a relationship are just exponential. Not that's not the word I'm looking for. Those are they're really brought to light. I can't think of the word I'm trying. To. But all of those things about yourself are really brought forward. In a relationship because you're trying to display it for your partner so um yeah man great advice great advice i, I have another um <laughs> another thing that i want to show you um i saw oh, send it i saw this meme I'll, I'll put it on the on the on the chat um so this meme it, it can it relates to this because it's something that um that's uh, that's happened a lot and uh, that's why me and gabby are like this let me show you where is it which one uh, no, I'm looking for it, sorry. I can describe it, I guess. I can't, I can't find it. So, oh, post. Here it is. Oh, this one. So I don't know if you, you, can, if you can see it with the camera. It's this meme. Oh, God, it's not going to focus. Okay, wait. No? Oh, the, where people have the, the child to try to banish the exactly. relationship. Exactly. That is probably the worst thing you could ever do. In yeah, life. and I agree with that because, so basically it says couples in their 20 and then they have uh, a clearly unhealthy relationship and then they try to fix it by having a child and that's like literally checkmate like that's the worst thing you can do honestly um sometimes they, yeah sure it might work out i've never seen it happen i've never ex like seen anybody <laughs> that's worked out but yeah you do you it's never worked out but anybody, but honestly if you're unhappy with a person and then you having a child with them like, that's not it's not gonna work mm -hmm. because like when you have a child this is speaking from experience actually when you have a child with someone, all of their 
personality is what's the fucking word I'm trying to think of, yo? Like you, it's, it's ex exuberates, exaggerates. It's a uh, it comes yeah, out. Yeah, it's exaggerated to a degree. It 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 shines a lot brighter. Like all the things that you like about them, like shine brighter when you have a child. But so do all the things that you hate about them. Like if someone's unreliable and then you have a child with them, well now you're gonna see really see how unreliable they are. Or if someone isn't trustworthy and you have a child with them, you're really gonna see how untrustworthy they are. So like having a child is never a fix for anything. Like Yeah, never. Um that's one thing that I hope people people don't do. All of you watching, like and I, I'm sure you're all smart enough that it, it's harder to raise a child on their on your own than with two people that you uh, you, you cooperate with. Um, and think, Am think amplified you, may may yeah. or may not be the word. Oh, amplified. Yeah, that 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 makes sense. Am amplified may or may not be the word I was trying to think of. Thank you, Zeus. Um, so Josh. He, oh, that's Josh. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Um, so he's trying to correct you. <laughs> um, so yeah, that never have a child because if you do, then it comes <laughs> the custody issues. The, the the court hearings, the divorce papers, all that, and you don't want to deal with that. Like that's that's tough. Yeah, never have a child ever. Just don't do it. Get a puppy. <laughs> uh, that that's personal choice. That's another topic, but yeah. <laughs> um And yeah, unless anybody else has anything else to say in the chat. Get a cat? Oh I yeah, cats are cool. I like cats. Cats are trash. Cats are so trash. Get a dog. Dogs are cooler, in my opinion, but cats are cool. <laughs> Dog, cats are terrible. But then again, I've never had a, I've never had a child, so I don't know what it feels like, and I, I want to in the future. But after I finish my, uh, my career goals, like, <laughs> I want, and that'll be in maybe one or two years. But after that, maybe. And, and if it happens before, I'm fine with it now because I feel like me and Gabby have such a, a strong relationship that we can, we can get through anything. So. Yeah, anything can happen. <laughs> we're not trying. I'm not saying we're trying, but but uh, we'll see. <laughs> hey man, go for it. <laughs> uh, so number six. So this this is basically like an overview topic. Like this. We've kind of talked about. We've talked about this before, but but yeah, more. So this is gonna be a general topic. So uh, if you guys have anything to say in the chat with about this one as well. So what's your opinion on dating in 2020, especially during the pandemic and all that? What do you, what do you think? 2020 is a no-go. It's absolutely trash. I, I tried dating someone or talking or trying. I, I've tried trying to date someone in 2020 and it was just, it wasn't for me. Like, mom, just the way that life worked out. Um, I didn't have the time to date. I didn't have the, the um, not the transportation, but I didn't have the opportunity to, to really date. And, you know, with online dating, um, a lot of the people that you meet and mesh with aren't really local. So um, with the world being shut down and you can't really travel to date that person, it just makes it that much more difficult. Now, some people I've seen, like I said, they they found um, people to date in 2020. They found their long distance. They made it work just through effort and commitment. And I applaud those people. But for me, yeah, nah, I think you just... I think you would just, if you're single now, you just wait until um, the world opens back up because dating online is a lot different than dating exclusively online. And dating exclusively online, I don't think we're, I don't think um, humans are ready for that yet because you, you can't really get to know someone online because you don't get to know them, their mannerisms, like their, 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 their personal properties, so to say. You, you don't really get to know you know, like the way that they they move, the way they they talk, the the general way that they think, and the way that they they formulate their personality. You don't get to know those things online, because one, like in dating, I said they're only showing you the parts of themselves that they're they're expecting you to accept, and that's all fine and dandy. But once you build this person up in your head based around the things that they're showing you, it's like, oh, this person is really great for me, and I like everything about them. Well, when you meet them, you quickly discover the things about them that you don't like. Like, oh man, they, they walk funny, they talk funny, they they don't look the way I thought they looked, or they... No. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> what was I talking about? 
They talk online funny. Dating. Something about talking funny. Yeah, they talk funny. <laughs> like you. I don't think you can date exclusively online. That's why I think dating is trash in 2020. Yeah, so when I made up this question, I was thinking of specifically the pandemic and all that. Um, and yeah, I, I think I think uh, in, in the chat, I'll get to that right now. But the opinion on dating in 2020 for me, I it, it's hard because I'm super duper lucky that, that me and Gabby moved in right before the pandemic started. Because um, if we didn't, it'd be much harder. Um, like maybe I couldn't go to her house sometimes or she couldn't come to mine. Uh, for different reasons, different reasons, maybe we had a cold or something. But now that we live together, that's that that's basically a, a it solidified our relationship even more, and it taught us how it feels like to be with a person in a house twenty four seven. And I'm happy that it worked out, and, and it's working out. Um, but with other people, other couples, for example, um, maybe they live close to each other, and they used to see each other every day, go to the park, go to dates, whatever. And now with 2020, everything's closed. They can't do that. So this is going to really test the way that they connect, their, their connection. Because if they can't go to the movies anymore, like, were they really in a relationship just trying to go to the movies together? Or were they actually trying to build something together? So that's going to, that's a lot of, uh, it's going to test couples like that. Um, other couples are long distance relationship. So the pandemic might not affect them as much. Um, and, and long distance is hard. Um. I'm guessing I've never had to go through it, but it seems hard. Um, and 2020, honestly, everybody feels so down. Just everybody's mental health just went down. I feel uh, with everything that's going on, so that might affect affect their relationship. Um, so I think it's more if you're single right now. Honestly, I I would advise to stay single until after the pandemic, because after the pandemic ends, it's not going to be just like 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 on a snap of a finger it's gonna be take a while but things are gonna be open up opening up you can go to the movies again and we're gonna see that light at the end of the tunnel and then i think after that everybody's gonna be everybody's happiness and mental health is gonna go up and then that's gonna be a much safer and better playing field when it comes to dating um that's my opinion also too like dating in 2020 like you can if you choose to date during this um, these trying times, you got to be, like, really, like, original in your ideas. Because, like, trying to convince someone that you're, like, the person to be in a relationship with, like, going on dates right now, like, everything is closed, everything is, it's just really difficult to, you know, find a space to meet someone or to take someone, and then you do the date, you hope the date goes well, and then now you have to worry about the future dates to where you can't do that first thing anymore. So now you got to come up with another original idea and then another one and then another one. And it's just super difficult. Um, so yeah, if you want to date, if you want to date right now, you're going to have to just bring your super, like just a game, just try hard all in or nothing type deal. And then that just makes it, I think it'll make it better if it does work out. But it'll be a lower low if it doesn't work out. So um, if you're willing to risk that, by all means, just understand that you have to be willing um, to hit a, a new low in your mental health, like relationship wise, if it doesn't work out. Or you could just be like me and just bottle that shit up and be like, just top it up to the game. Like, yeah, that shit didn't work out. I'll be doing trying it again later with somebody. Yeah, have a podcast or stream like this and vent. Yeah, just <laughs> get on Twitch and talk to a bunch of random people about how you hate the world. <laughs> um, one thing I that hate. I was going to say, um, oh, what, what was I about? I was about to say something. No, I, I literally forgot about it. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, no, no, no. I just, I just remembered. So I think we're talking about it in, in our perspective. And our perspective is that we live on our own. I think it's much harder when these people dating live with their parents that's another uh, big plus to moving out you can do whatever you want you can have anybody you want over but if you live with your parents i know dating is super hard because like you can't really have privacy but even during the pandemic now it's even harder because maybe your parents um don't want anybody to come over or uh or you feel shy asking them because it's something iffy right now having people over at your house so that makes it even harder for them that's another obstacle to to uh 
to go through and that's why I really encourage everybody to move out I know this year is super hard financially and uh, mentally um, but if you can move out I'll, I would highly suggest it to anyone and if you if you need any advice just ask me in Slain or anything um, we'd be happy to help toast it, it cannot be that hard to find someone for you you're a girl okay like you just walk outside throw a coin you'll find a guy <laughs> That's that's the worst advice ever. No, no. So if you want if you want to, if you want help finding somebody, we got you. All right, we 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 we'll, I will personally come to Canada, and then we'll set up a matchmaking service for you. Have have speed dates set up. We'll have guys come in one at a time for five minutes each. We'll, we'll get you your we'll get you your e boy. All right, good advice. <laughs> she doesn't want a simp army. <laughs> All right, if anybody it's else... Corpse, it's not corpse, happening. Corpse, bruh. <laughs> it's not happening. All right. You getting corpse is like me getting Valky Ray. Right? No, she, she's happening. she's 18, Colin. Don't worry. We <laughs> we wouldn't have this talk a couple months ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. If, if she wasn't at least 18, I would not talk to her ever. Yeah. No one that, in my actually, circle was below 18. That's another thing that I wanted to talk to you about, that we both agree on that. Like, it, you can't really have anybody in your social circle... Oh, wait, what? Never mind. This is uh, another. I'll talk about it off stream. But you, um, but the fact is, uh, <laughs> sorry, I got a little. <laughs> I thought about something from from back then. Um, because we talked about this before. We said that mm -hmm. everybody has to be on the same page, and 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 that's true. Because if you're not, then comes the legality issues, and then comes even just like, it makes you feel act like a creep if you're inviting underage girls, and that's. I wouldn't be able to live with that. Like it's, it's weird. You know, I didn't even hang out with Linky really until he was 18 years old. Right? <laughs> well, you had a crush on him or what? <laughs> no, was, Linky love. I was too young for the activities that I wanted to participate in, and I didn't want the stress of having to, you know, do something behind people's back or to do something and have to worry about like if anything happened, like I'm responsible for someone here. Like, no. No, I completely agree. Um... I think, I, like, I never want, I never did either. Um, Linky was 17 when we started hanging out. And, and by hanging out, I mean just going to Smash tournaments, giving him a ride to Smash tournaments. But yeah. he, then he turned 18, and then we actually, like, we went to Vegas. He, he's 19 now, almost 20. We went to Vegas. We uh, He used to come to my house and play Smash. And it, it, it just felt better when he was 18. Um, that sounded kind of weird. But uh, no, no don't, don't hang out with people under age. Understands what you mean, so. Okay, yeah, because uh, that's a whole different issue, but uh, a different topic. But uh, yeah, I complete. I, I'm glad we're on the same page with that. Yeah, I, I oh shit, I gotta sneeze. Yeah, you, you're just not allowed in my soul. Like people, like some people get offended by that. Some people feel like I'm being like you know, exclusionary or just a bad person or being rude. It was like no, if you're if you're not at least eighteen, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to be around you. Like you can't come to anything that I'm attending. And if you are there, I will leave. <laughs> Jay Jay says, when can I be a guest? Um, Never. I feel like you would be. You would provide some good input. Um, I mean, Never. this is our first episode, so we really really don't know. <laughs> but if you guys ever want to be a guest or anything, just let us know. We can come up with topics and all that for different. Hopefully, we can do this every week. Um, I'd like to. I don't know Hold if you, you can. Slain. What about Colin? Uh, Colin said something about he has something eating at him about dating. All right, so if you hang out with a girl and you do date stuff, even if you don't call it a date, is it still a date? Oh, okay. This, this is a, okay. You go first. This is a first. very touchy topic that I feel like we need a woman on here to talk about, because for me, if we hanging out one on one, and it's understood that you know we're pursuing a relationship. It's a date. But a lot of women, like I said, they, they want that communication to where they want you to, like, they want you to, um, they want you to invite them, like, on the date. You have to acknowledge that, yes, this is a date. They want you to, like, do all those things to clarify for them that, yes, indeed, this is a date. This is for the purpose of, you know, getting to know each other and pursuing a relationship. So... Um, if you want to date somebody, um, no, if you want to hang out with somebody one on one, and you want it to be a date, just let them know. You can either ask or let them know like what your intentions are. Like, yes, 
I want to do this with you. I want to go see this performance. It's going to be a one-on-one thing. I want this to be a date. Specifically, like, the word, like, this is going to be a date. Um, women really appreciate that. Uh, I, I can't say they really expect it, but they appreciate it, and they definitely want it. But, yeah, in my own opinion, though, like, um, even, like, with my ex, like, you, you remember my ex. Um, yeah. <laughs> we were we were dating for um, a, a few months, but because of the fact that I never asked, um, I never asked her to be my girlfriend specifically, she refused to wear the title. So when I introduced her to my friends, I was like, hey, everybody, they're like, oh, this is your girlfriend? I said, yes. She said, no. I was like, what? Oh, that's said, awkward. Yeah. I said, yes. She said, no. I said, what? And she was like, you never asked me. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. Cool. Not my girlfriend, but we are dating. And she acknowledged that we were dating because I had asked her, you know, on dates previously. Yeah, I had a... Uh... <laughs> So that that's Colin's context. We can we can get into that right now. This is this feels like we're uh, we're in a hotline. This is like a dating hotline. <laughs> right, cool. And that's cool. Like I'm what, trash at dating myself, but I give really good dating advice. All right, reconnect with this girl who I was in high school with. I was never really friends with her because she was popular. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> and with my twin sister's friend, you have a twin? Colin, what the fuck? Yeah, he has okay. a twin. And I'm sorry, talking, and I found out she's secretly really into fire. I'm like, Let's go. So we talk about it like that. Then she's like, we would hang out. And I'm like, okay, sure. She comes on, picks me up. We hang out in downtown. Colin, you got finessed. <laughs> okay. We get food and ice cream and stuff. And then I go to her place. You went to her place after the first interaction? Oh, had. Oh, rip. No, no. I know the story. Um, yeah. So so I think Colin says, he said before this. Um, so you're really, wondering if this is a date. He's really bad at reading signals, picking up signals. Uh, signals. Oh, okay, so you're wondering if she asked you on a date. First of all, Kyle, you, you, this is um, not a lot of women send that first, you know, invitation to, to dudes. So you you kind of got lucky on that one. And if y'all have a bunch of common interests, I would definitely bring up the topic. Yeah, just hit her up, and um, we didn't do anything. We just hung out for hours. Yeah, but that's that seems very first dateish to hang out with somebody and just spend that time together, getting to know each other. But the fact that the word date never came up and it was never acknowledged as a date kind of blurs the lines of was it a date? In my opinion, yes, this was a date. Um, everything about this says that this was done for the purpose of getting to know each other. And that's for the purpose of possibly pursuing a relationship. Haven't talked that much lately, but here's the context. Damn. Um, well unfortunate that it didn't work out the way that you may have wanted or looking back at it in hindsight the way it should have gone but um yeah in my opinion yeah that was absolutely a, a first date well yeah um i think uh Get her up again sign her dms bro <laughs> shoot your shot but not like that no I, so that's one thing that i don't agree i really don't in a way i don't agree with shooting your shot in in how how the social media does it so in social media, basically you've seen it all. Like there's these memes, hey, you single? Hey, uh, come over or something like that. That's not shooting your shot, in my opinion. Unless like you want to hook up or whatever, then yeah, sure you shot your shot. But in order to establish an, uh, a long-lasting relationship, you can't. Uh, honestly, I don't think you should go with those cons. You shouldn't ask for that. You shouldn't shoot your shot like that. You should um, be more mild in your approach, as in. Like, ask her out to eat or even just hang hang out playing video games together. Whatever. Something small. Not, like, coming over to do to do that or saying, are you single? That comes with getting to know the person. Yeah, you'll find out if they're single or not. Don't just outright ask unless they're like that. Maybe they're, they're outspoken. And this is something you'll find out. And you need, to, you need to watch out for those signals. You need to see how that person is. If they're shy, like, never shoot your shot like that and, and, and stuff. Um, no, I think I think social media has given a bad rep to the the phrase "shoot your shot." Yeah, that's you what know, I'm saying. Shoot your shot just pretty much it just means to just initiate. That's all that that's all it okay. that means in a nutshell, just to initiate. And I agree with that, so, but um, the way they show it, yeah, I don't I don't agree with. You don't gotta just sign the DMs and be like, "Hey, girl, what's good? I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to slide." No, nah, you ain't gotta be weird about it or nothing like that. But I say if you want, if you want to take whatever relationship that you have now further, just communicate that. I say if y'all like if she comes she comes to your streams y'all y'all play video games every now and then, and uh, y'all communicate whenever you initiate that contact. These are these are all good signs. Like she's she's responding to you, which is more than um, what a lot of people can say about their personal interests. 
So if you wanna if you wanna take it, you know, to that next level, that next step further, it's all gonna have to just be in the way that you you word it. Yeah, Colin, like I I, I uh so I think it's Lane. So you, what, when you were talking about your ex and what she did and all that, that she wanted you to ask her and all that, I, I don't agree with her because the more you hang out with somebody one on one, the more you go on dates, the more you're just with them, you start to build something, and then it's pretty, it's super obvious once you both like each other and you both want to build something. I don't think it's necessary to literally say, "Do you want to be my girlfriend?" Because that's a little bit awkward sometimes, like. How are yeah, you gonna? It's stupid. I'm a grown ass. It's kind of <laughs> yeah. Like you both, it's super easy to read the signals sometimes, and even Colin can read those signals. So Colin, don't worry. Like, if you hang out with her more and more and more, you're gonna eventually like, catch on. And, and if she likes you and you like her, then it'll it'll come into fruition like naturally. Because like low key, I never asked Gabby to to like be my girlfriend either. It just happened like. We just hung out so much that it just grew into this relationship, and I don't think it's needed for the for the man or the woman to say, "Will you be my partner? Will, like, be my girlfriend or boyfriend?" I don't think like it, you just feel it and you you see the signals, and then eventually you you move in together, get like do all this travel and all that, and it's like, how are you not dating? Um, okay, uh, Colin, back into your specific situation. Um, look, I completely understand what you mean, saying like you you hate being the one to always have to initiate the contact. I broke off um, a lot of contact with people in the last two years just because I stopped, you know, messaging them first. And um, it sucks, but at the same time, I never communicated that I wanted people to communicate with me first more often. So I feel like... Um, I handle the situation not optimally. So I feel like, um, let's say, it seemed, just from what you were saying, it seemed like y'all have a pretty good vibe, a pretty good friendship going on already. And the only gripe you have is you don't want to be the one to say, hey, first every time. And if that's the way you feel about it, but you want to maintain that friendship, I think you could, you, I think you could just text her. Um, yeah, just hit her up first one last time and then be like, just, you don't have to, you can, I would. Just be bold about it. Just be like, hey, look, um, I really enjoy like you as a person, but uh, I feel like you never really reach out to me. I'm always the one reaching out to you first, and I would appreciate it if you would like, if you reached out to me um, more often whenever you wanted to talk or hang out or play video games or anything like that. So, um, yeah, man, it's kind of it may be a little out of your element to be that direct, but I think that the benefits will quickly outweigh um, that that reservedness that you have. And if it doesn't, then fuck it. You, you see where her, you see where her allegiance lies. Talk yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's relevant. Um. So let's go. Let's go to the next question. I think we talked a lot about twenty twenty or and dating and all that. Yeah, we did. So how do you expand your social circle? You want to start with that? <laughs> I am terrible at this because I'm trash at meeting new people. I am so introverted. It's ridiculous. Um. Cause I like I'm a I'm an actiony person. Like I express myself through actions and consistency, and words are not my strong suit. So when it comes to meeting new people, um, I'm really bad at meeting new people. But if I meet you, and if we like, if we're in an environment where we will consistently see each other, then I I open up to you, and then we can we'll be friends. I'm a great friend, not to be headstrong about it or anything, but. Like, I'm a, I'm a really good friend and a good person, but that's like expanding your social circle, man. I have no idea, man. Like, <laughs> like how do you just go out meet new people? I I do not know because I, I hate talking to people. I hate talking to new people because I never really know, like what their interests are, or what what they find offensive. That's <laughs> that's like the biggest thing for me is like, I don't know what you find offensive, so I don't know how to approach you, like what to say, what can I not say, what can I do, what can I not do, like what do like, what do you not like? Like, I don't know none of this stuff. So, it's, <laughs> yeah, uh, for me, back in high school, I feel like it's it was so much different back then. Like, I used to be that kid who would hang out with all the different groups. Like, I would hang out with the nerds. I would hang out with the emo kids. I would hang out with the jocks. And everybody accepted me, and I would be friends with all of them. 
And it was so easy because back in high school, like, I felt confident, honestly. And I felt like I could just go up to anybody and just talk to them and, uh, and just hang out. But now, like, I, I'm, I feel like as we grow older, we feel like, for, for, this is from my, example, from my experience, I feel like I don't, I, don't find, I don't have the time and the energy to expand my social circle unless that person, um, unless I really connect with that person or I really get to know that person. Um, and, and yeah, I usually just, I think you too, you just said it. I think a lot of people, as we grow older, we just stick to the same kind of people, the same friends. Um, and sometimes we might get a new one. Yeah, sure. But I'm never looking out for other groups. I'm never looking out to get another group of friends. Like it, sometimes it just happens. It's, it's a natural thing. Um, yeah, it's super natural. And I think like, as you get older too, like you, you stop looking to expand your social circle mm -hmm. because you're not really gonna need that validation from people anymore. Like Kyle, you say like you meet people from like streams and discord. That's how I've met a majority like of the people who I talk to and hang out with today. Like, I think I, I just met Toast like a month ago, just through you guys' Discord and playing like Among Us. Cause I don't play Valorant and I uninstalled me. This <laughs> so was like, um, yeah, I met Toast like through you guys' um, Discord. I met, uh, like, me and Colin, like, we were, we've been friends for a pretty decent amount of time, but we've really connected this year through um, streaming and Discord. Um, Mark, man, and those guys, I don't really know them, but I met them just through your own little tiny community. And uh, we get along virtually um, pretty well. Yeah, I, I agree, Arnim. Like, you're one of those people that joined our social circle. Like, we all appreciate it, and we all like, oh, cool. Like, he's chill too. And it just happened. It's one of those natural things, and and uh, and, and I'm happy that worked out. And and ha I'm happy you're here, and we're all just chilling. Um, and yeah, Colin, meeting people through Discord and, and games and all that, online friendships. Um, Sometimes I, you could feel like they're falling apart, like you said, but but never, like, I don't know. For, so for me, I, I never have any... Um, what happens with, with me is that this is personal. So I, if somebody hits me up, um, I usually am the one to be hit up. I usually don't hit other people, hit, hit up other people. Um, trash. <laughs> yeah, and this is because, okay, yeah. And this is because, like... It's hard when I'm so busy, like, like, uh, like being with Gabby, like I love it, but like it's a lot of work and time. So sometimes, like, I don't have the time or or need to hit up my friends. Um, you guys, I know you guys are always there for me. Like for example, you slain, mm -hmm. I, I know I can hit you up whenever and all that, but I don't need it because like I feel lucky that I have Gabby and I can just have her and she helps me through everything, and I I hope that you don't take this the wrong way that I don't I don't want you or I don't no, need no, you no. Like I, I hope you feel like that that friendship is is solid, but sometimes I, I really don't look out for for help with other with other friends, and that's because I, I'm not single. If I was single, yeah, I think I, I would need help coping with, especially this year and this this month was super tough for me, and Gabby helped me through it. Um, but I didn't have to reach out to my friends. Um, and I'm, I feel lucky with that, and I hope you guys don't take it the wrong way because I love I love all of you. Like we're all I think we're all chill. If I don't if I don't hear back, if, if I don't hit you up, or even if I don't respond to you, or if, if we don't if you're on stream right now and I don't talk to you, that means we're not cool because I don't want to waste my energy on people that I don't care. But all of you guys here, like I feel like we're we're chill. Like Colin, Arnim, Chupi, like I lo I love you all, and it's like I wish I could have more time to hit you guys up, but I, I don't. But don't take nah, it the wrong I totally way. Get it. Yeah. Nah, I get it. I get it. Cause like it's it's some days where like I, I feel like super, I'm super social where I'm 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 talking to everybody within reach, and then there are some days where like <laughs> yeah we have that, that group chat. It'll be some days to where I'll get like two messages in the group chat. I'll be like shut up and I'll mute it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's just it's just um I say it's just that um that availability. Now uh, not everyone has the same level of availability. Or um, just you know need to communicate to their social circle, which is why you don't need a very big one. Yeah, yeah, I don't agree with big social circles because then <laughs> love you too, Mo bro. Oh, let's go. Yeah, let's I love go, this, especially like I keep bringing up social media, but it's true. Like they make you think that in order to be successful and happy, you need a bunch of friends, and it just looks so superficial to me. Like it doesn't even look like a real friendship. They just hit up people to go to a party. 
they post on their story, they take a selfie, and then that's it. And I don't think that's true friendship. And social media makes people believe, especially young kids, that that's what you need in life. And, and it's honestly not true. Oh, yeah, Colin, I, I, heard, about, I heard about that story. Finally got my PS3 back. Oh, damn. I left it to him, gave it to him, but his girlfriend took it over a year to get it back. That's rough. Yeah, so how do you expand your social circle? Where, well, um, I don't think there's that much of a need to, um, but how you do it is it's just naturally, like, like how we've been doing, honestly. We just go to Smash tournaments. We go to places where people are going to be friends of friends, introduce each other, and it, it, just, it just happens. It's not like you... You would you should never feel the need to just hit up random strangers and and try to be their friend that because that that comes out as creepy and not cool. You gotta like I don't know if it's online for example, go on the stream, talk to them, um, or no, like their tweets, talk to them through Twitter, Twitter whatever. Right. Yeah, but never like be like Do you want to be my friend because that never works out. That's kind of awkward. No, I think uh, it was just like outside of us personally. If you want to expand your social circle. Just whatever a hobby or interest that you have, just um, you definitely know somebody like with a similar interest to that. So it starts just with connecting with like that friend or even already having that friend, and then you express to that person like, "Hey, look, man, I want to, I want to expand my circle. I want to meet somebody new. Like, um, you, you have some friends, or even like, you ain't even gotta really ask, cause like I said, you just join the Discord and then other people join the Discord, and now you're meeting new people." Or you can, I said, um, social gaming is pretty big now too. Like just like um, Apex, Call of Duty, Among Us. You meet people, like you meet a lot of people just already. So if you want to expand your social circle, just expand on those those new meetings. Yeah, like like you said, with like for example, Toast. Like we just played a lot of Among Us, and then you got to know yeah. her, and, and that's true. Us, us too. I, we, I played Valorant with her. That's an example, and then we just got to know each other, and that's. That's how it works usually. You just build friendships like that. Yeah, I met Toast through the, the Discord. We played Among Us, and then um, ended up joining like a, another server that she plays Among Us in. I met those people like Cat and um, Obi, and then they're really cool. And then I joined the Among Us server, and I met like Dylan and Latios, and they're all pretty cool people. It's just meeting people isn't that difficult. It's pretty. It's pretty easy. And what Chupi's saying is true, though. Um, he says he misses going out to eat with the homies after a tournament. Yeah, that's the... Honestly, after the tournament, that's that's why I go to tournaments. Just to hang out with people. Like, I don't care about how I do in tournament anymore. I'm. Uh, it's, this is another whole issue I can talk about in the next episode, but... I hate... I don't want to show up, go O2, and go to Denny's. Exactly. No, no, no. People show up, go O2, and go home. I hate that. Like, bro, like... If you go O2, whatever, just talk to people. Chill with people. Go out to Denny's or in and out whatever. Like, the, after the tournament is when the real fun begins. Um, even during the tournament, you can you can chill and watch your friends do well in tournament, yourself do well, whatever. But that shouldn't be your main, um, uh, main reason why you go to tournaments. And tournaments is just another way of meeting people or get or building that friendship, uh, friendships with them. So that that's why I go to tournaments, and that's why everybody should go to tournaments. Because then you just feel sad that you go O2, you go home, and then you cry about it on Twitter. And then that's it. That's your whole life. <laughs> on the SD Smash page. <laughs> or on the SD Discord, right, Chupi? <laughs> Bro, I hate, I hate when people like do that, when they, when they just compare themselves as well. That's another issue as well. But never compare yourself. Like, Just have fun with the game. This is, a, this is just a game. There's a high, there's a 99%, 99.9% chance that you're not going to live off of Smash. And this is what I tell people. You're not going to live off of Smash, so why take it so seriously? Why get mad over it? Why risk your mental health over this game? Just do it to meet people. That's it. Alright. Uh, let's get into this last topic. Was, um, this one was pretty specific and it came from you. Yeah. Um, you said, how does high school and like that that transition from high school how does that shape your future so that's uh, uh yeah so i'm really passionate about this and I, i'm always down to give advice if you ever need advice or anything so this question is basically phrasing what i one of my models in life actually my second my number two my number one model i can uh talk about it in the next episode 
But my number two motto is, like, try in high school. I'm not talking about having good grades. I'm talking about, like, trying to make your, start your life, your career um, during those high school years. Um, because that's when it actually shapes your whole life. For example, um, I, I'm lucky and I'm happy that I saw this back when I was in middle school. In middle school, I was like, huh, I see all of these older men right, right out of high school. They go to their minimum wage jobs and that's their whole life. And I told myself I would never be like that. I want to do something else. It's, it's just not for me. So then I'm happy that my dad took me to his work. He does construction work. So I went to his work. I worked with him. He, he was like, I was like 13 or 14 at the time. He would tell me, hey, let's, let's wake up. It was like 6 a.m. Wake up. We got to go to work. So then I would go to work with him, like try to build houses, uh, wheelbarrow some cement, clean up all the mess. It was super hard work, and I was, I was dreading it. And he would, he would notice, and he would tell me, stay in school or do something with your life unless you want to do this for the rest of your life or, or be in a minimum wage job. And I took that to heart and I'm glad I did because I really, tr I tried in high school. Um, I wasn't like, I, I was, honestly, I was straight A, but I, I was lucky that my high school was pretty easy. <laughs> like, not going to lie. Like, nobody in my high school tried, so I was like the top of the class easy. If I was in okay. another high school, yeah, it was a, if I was in another high school, like a top rank high school, I don't know how would I would have done, but... My high school was super easy. It was all ghetto and all that. So I, I, all I did was try a little bit, and I, I got good grades. And those good grades are what led me to UCSD. And then, honestly, those four years at UCSD, like, they just shaped who I am. And it's, it's just crazy to think about because um, if I would have gotten, like, an, a B instead of an A once more, I don't think I would have gotten accepted to UCSD. And it's, oh, it's, I was in that very, I was, I barely got accepted to UCSD and I was, it was crazy. Um, and that shaped my whole life. Like I graduated from UCSD um, and I was, I'm lucky and I'm, I'm grateful. And, and maybe a lot of people, I, a lot of people do not have that opportunity, but I was lucky enough to do, to have that. And then after that, I just got a, uh, a job and I told myself, so basically, I, I don't know if you know this lane, I think you do, that I graduated as a computer science um, engineer major. Okay. So, uh, all my classes were about coding and all that, and it, it was super hard, and I barely passed those classes. But honestly, my, my, my mentality was not try to get an A, like be in the lab all day, no. Like, my mentality was just get a degree and then have a job after college that I could have a, have a, have a nice salary and I could live uh, comfortably. Because mm -hmm. a lot of my colleagues... Um, you know what they do? They, they work in those companies. They code all day. They go home. Then they code again. And they do overtime. And it's just not a, not a... That's their whole life, honestly. Just that company. And that's what computer science does to you. Because in computer science, you can either build your own company, your own app, or whatever. Maybe it explodes. But that's super unlikely. Or you can join Google, join Amazon, code for them. And then you're super miserable. Like, you earn so much money, but... I don't think, like, money is not everything for me. So, uh, that high, like, let me go back to, let me go back to my point. So, high school really, that's when I got my perspective on life, that this is what I wanted to do. Like, right now, I go to work, uh, right now, I'm super lucky. I work from home, and honestly, it's not much work. Like, I can just turn it off whenever I want. Um, and when I did go to work, it would be from 8.30 to 4, 4.30, whatever, 8.30 to 5.00. And then after five, like I would shut off my brain with work. Like I don't, I wouldn't have to think about work. And that's what I love about my career, my job, where I'm at, where I am in life. I don't want to think about work after work. I just want to live my life, and that's what's really helped my uh, mental health. Um, so all all of you guys, if you're still in high school, I don't think any of you guys are. But I don't think anybody is still in school. Yeah. So I, I just want you to, even if if you're not, it's still not too late. Like, I advise everybody to get a degree, and this is what I tell everybody, this is what I tell my brother. So just get a degree in whatever. In, it, like, now that I, that I graduated, I see all these applications, and you don't really need a degree in a specific thing. Just get a degree. It just says bachelor's, it just says associate's, whatever. It doesn't matter. And that is going to have you, like, over people who do minimum wage or do hard labor. 
And there's nothing bad about doing hard labor or minimum wage. It's just different. And if you're not into hard labor or minimum wage, then like get a degree. If you are, that's fine. Just like do what do whatever you want in life. But it's I'm telling you, it's life is much easier when you are not hard labor or minimum wage. That that's just my opinion. <laughs> I actually have a I have a story about something similar to me that happened like that. Uh, I think I may have told you this before, but uh, I'll get to it. Mm -hmm. But let's see. So how does high school affect your future? I think that standardized testing and like just public education ruins like people because you um, you never really learn about individuality or like how to profit from your own personal interests. Everything that you learn in school is just like reading, writing, arithmetic, pretty much, and as a basis. And then they tell you, "Oh yeah, go to college," and then you go to school, and then I, "Oh yeah, you, you'll get a job." But um, they never really teach you life skills. I don't think life skills can be taught. They have to be just earned from trial by fire. Like you don't learn how to network in school. Like you learn networking by doing it, failing, and then succeeding. Um, you never learn, you know, like which job markets are profitable or which ones are going to be like minimum wage or labor jobs or anything. You, you never really learn that until you do it. So I uh, said so with me, like I graduated high school. Um, I graduated valedictorian at my school and that itself has done nothing for me in my life. Like just because I got good grades in high school, it did nothing for me in life. And when I was done with school, I didn't really have any, I sat down and thought about this. I didn't have any skills and uh, I didn't have anything that about me that I thought I could make money from. And my solution for that was I said, okay, well, what do I like to do? Well, I'm in ROTC in, in high school and I like, you know, I like military. I like military bearing. There's an order to everything. Uh, you do what you're told and then you give out orders and you're successful that way. So I joined the Navy. Uh, Navy taught me how to work with computers and computer systems. Now, six years down the line, I have seven years worth of OJT. I have my security certifications, and I know I'm a subject matter expert in my job field, and I can work anywhere for the rest of my life because technology jobs will always be in demand. But uh, I said, not everyone is a lot of the same opportunity and skill set that I have. Not everyone has the same learning capabilities that I have. And I feel like in school they they never teach you those things they, they don't teach you how to properly set yourself up to be successful in life so um i think we need to do a better job as people like training not training but educating our youth on like how life is gonna go past school years because once you're done with school like you're an adult you're in the system like you got to pay taxes, you got to pay bills, you have to be self-sufficient. And no one's really going to care about you or your like um, your abilities because they're too busy giving standardized tests to the youth. Um, but to get into my story <laughs> about um, minimum wage working. So um, when I first, uh, when I got to my job at the hospital three years ago, um, I went out for drinks with some of my coworkers and we got just shit faced. And it's like two in the morning, and we wound up in a Jack in the Box. <laughs> and uh, we're all waiting. We're all waiting for our Ubers at the Jack in the Box, and uh, we're all just drunk. And uh, the guy, he's um, works at the Jack in the Box. He's taking my order, and um, I'm just being loud and belligerent for no fucking reason. And we're yelling, and I give him my order. I forget how we get on the topic, but uh, I think my coworker said some stupid shit to me, and um, I was like, I think the guy couldn't understand my order, and I, I berated him. I think. I was like, can you not understand my order? And she was like, don't talk to him like that. Like, like you're better than him. And I was like, I am better than him. <laughs> and she was like, wow, what do you mean? And I was like, look, I, said, I, I don't care what happens to me in my life. I will never work his job. And I pointed out, I, like, I would never have his job. I am better than this. And I caught so much shit for this. But that's really how I felt. It was like, with my skill set, and just with my mentality on life and the things I've learned, I will never work a minimum wage job again just because I will I, I will never have to. 
because I know what it takes to never have to do that again. And in my opinion, that makes me better than him working this minimum wage job. <laughs> now, I don't know anything about this guy. I don't know how old he was or what he did, what he had going on in life. And um, it was a really shitty thing to say, but my viewpoint on this stands the same. So I, I do feel like um, if we educate our, our youth better on what life will be like after school, then um, we'll never really have to just force somebody to work minimum wage. Somebody going to have to do it, but no one will ever have to think of a minimum wage job as you know, like their, their only option. Yeah. I think that starts with um, education pre-high school. And yeah, I agree with what Colin is saying as well. It, it ties in with what you're saying that high school re- didn't really prepare you for, for your career for after high school. He said a lot of the teachers didn't really care. And mm-hmm. uh, that's that's true. And I wish something would be done about that because, and, and your next point is true about community college, especially in, like in my high school, I was in part of AVID. And AVID honestly taught everybody, all the kids that if you didn't go to a four year university, you were a failure. And that's not cool. And that's not true at yeah. all, honestly. And it's it's sad what what uh, what kids learn from from school sometimes. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, same thing that you're saying, Colin. Um, people saying living with your parents is for losers. Mm. Look, man, I I personally know some people like from the military who um, they were fortunate enough to stay in areas where their parents were, and they just live with their parents, and they use their money that they would otherwise be spending living on their own just further improving their lives and now they have like houses they have families they bought their dream car or they stick they have money for their hobbies and they really enjoy their hobbies and they're happy yeah so um there's there's no there's no correct way to live life there's no there's, yeah there's no correct way to live life so if you find that living with your parents is the best arrangement for your life then by all means yeah stay with your parents and some some actually like need that financial support like if my parents didn't work, if my dad didn't work, then I would live with them and try to help them out and financially. But some people don't have that option. Some people's parents like can't work, so they have to be there, and that's totally fine. Um, but like, yeah, don't get it twisted. I'm not. I never said like I, I don't agree with pa- living with your parents is for losers. That's not true at all. I, I just said that I encourage any, anybody who can um, to move out if you can and if yeah. you are willing to. If not, it's totally fine, but I really uh, I encourage it, but it's it's fine either way. I'm just saying it's much easier to be independent um, on your mental health and on your... It's, it's, it's just crazy how much um, confident you get just by living on your own. Um, and there's nothing bad with living your, on your, with your parents at all. Unless, unless you're like 50 and they want you to move out and they keep telling you to move out. But right now we're all young here. It's it's totally fine. Don't worry. Especially your dogs. Right. Yeah, if you have dogs, you're gonna miss them. <laughs> are they kicking you out, Colin? Dang. Wait, what? They're kicking you out? No, I don't think they're kicking him out. But he's saying he's gonna have to move next fall. Oh. It's gonna suck at first. I, I ain't gonna hold you. It's gonna suck at first, just being on your own if you don't have roommates. Um, it's gonna suck. Just um, you're gonna have empty house syndrome really badly for a while i had it too but that freedom and happiness that you get from that freedom it's gonna it's, it replaces it pretty yeah quickly yeah Chupi said living with my parents is definitely the move yeah for some it, it isn't that's fine you're you're uh saving up money a lot of money they don't want you to move out so why are you moving out is it a school thing That's two crazy. hours twin from school. Ooh, gross. Oh. Oh no. I mean, honestly, that would be worth it just for two years. Because you're gonna get an associate's, I'm guessing. You're just going for that. Jobbing two hours is worth it? No, sir. I hate jobbing thirty minutes to work every day. No, I'm talking about moving out. It's like it's worth it to move oh, out. Okay. Yeah, it'll be worth it. Call State Long Beach. Okay. Yeah, don't worry. If you need any advice, let us know. Especially with San Diego um, colleges, I'm really familiar with SDSU, San Marcos, UCSD. Probably three. That's fine. Like honestly, those are going to be the best years of your life. College was the best years of my life so far. It was super fun. 
Um, yeah. All right, well, um, yeah, that's all I got on the topics. I think we're, we went through them all. So, chat, if y'all have any just random questions, this is the rapid fire round. Yeah. Uh, if y'all want to ask us questions to get our opinions on literally anything, ask for advice about literally anything, this is your time to shine. Yeah, I'm going to write that down. Any personal or any questions at all? The Jeopardy music comes in. <laughs> yeah, let me let me get that in the background. No, oh, no, I was kidding. <laughs> All right, next time, we'll, we'll have a better production value next time. Yeah, if you ever need advice calling or anything, just hit us up. Um, yeah, you know you can always reach out to me and Slane. So, any questions from anybody in the chat? Who probably doesn't, maybe they know about us, but they want to learn more, or they don't know much about us. When the production value yeah, is fine, thank you. Any question at all. It can be, do you believe dinosaurs still exist? I don't know. Papa Slicer? <laughs> Bruh, I'm not, a, I'm not that old. <laughs> I mean, maybe this yeah. month we're going to turn 26, Lane. Dane. Yep, I'm ready. <laughs> I was telling my coworker, I was like, after 25, birthdays, to me, my birthdays don't really matter. Like, I, I've hit all the checkpoints in life. Up until I get like 63 and I can collect retirement. Like, <laughs> I'm, every year I get older, it's just like, yeah. When, when will I be a guest? I mean, uh, you know what we should do, Slane? So anybody who wants to be a guest, send us questions, possible topics that we could talk about, us three. And then we'll see if it's good enough. And then if it is, we'll bring you in for... One of the episodes. This is good enough. <laughs> Try it. Oh my I'm, God, let's try it. I mean, I feel like I hope, I, I hope somebody does it because I know before when the stream started, somebody talked about Smash, and honestly, I wasn't ready to talk about Smash back then. I think they left though. Um, yeah. So if you have any cool questions, write it down, send it to us, and if you want to be a guest, that's even better. We should do an yeah, SD podcast. Like, uh, we'll have you on. Um, Jay wants to do the show. Yeah. Uh, I think Toast says she wanted to do a show or at least a cameo on a show. Uh, Colin, if you want to be on the show, we'll, we'll bring you on. Yeah. We'll definitely let you know um, a good amount of time ahead of time if we um when we decide to have you on. And we should do an EP, <laughs> bro. And SD, be, uh, the big SD podcast? Else. Okay, Chupi. Okay, Chupi, with that comment, you said we should have an SD podcast. Do you honestly think that the SD like all of San Diego, the SD Discord, like what would they talk about? Like, because I go on it sometimes, and all I see is like, I'm better than you on Wi-Fi. I beat you three to two on Wi-Fi. Blah blah blah. <laughs> but that's kind of cringe to me, so that's why I'm not in it that much. I don't respond. <laughs> but uh, and you know who it is. It's usually like the same type of people. Um, but that's what the pot, the the Discord is sometimes. And I feel like you you know better. Like you're more mature than than some of them. Oh, I could be our friend group. Okay, cool. You wanna talk about the Smash Four days, Colin? I'm down. I was watching Smash Four earlier today. Just randomly. I was watching just old Void um and Larry sets. <laughs> Dude, the the San Diego Smash Four scene is much different than the old scene. Yeah, Ultimate For Scene sure. and the Smash Four scene are way different because I don't think I know. I don't know hardly anybody from Ultimate now. Smash Four. Days. I think it's cringe when people take Wi-Fi seriously. <laughs> Wi-Fi think... don't count for shit. Right? Yeah. I, was, I stand by that. Like, Wi-Fi does not count for anything. Like, yeah. Smash Online and Smash Land are two totally different games. Dude, you know what I wanted to talk about, Slane? All yeah. that. Um, so I've been meaning to talk about everything that happened this summer with all the the you know what happened with oh the, the, the pedophilia and the longers? and the twit longers all throughout the Smash man that's gonna have to be an that's another episode show. yeah that's another show <laughs> that's gonna be an entirely separate episode right there man we should do it with a special guest i don't know if you guys would be down i'll just say this right now a lot of those topics a lot of those people um i didn't care about a vast majority of the the people that got canceled ultimately because of their their actions, because it's like the things that they were doing just didn't make logical sense to me. Like everybody who got caught up with an underage person, I was just like, yeah, you're stupid. You deserve everything that's happening to you. And then, but there were some people who were like, I was an avid member in their communities, 
and they showed no signs of you know just betraying Dang. my trust. Yo, Debo's raining with a party of twenty. Let's go, Debo. Dang, dang. Yo, we we just <laughs> hey, we literally just started talking about Smash. What the heck? Yeah. Hey, let's go, guys. Yeah, we're raiding and we're we're ending the episode. No, no, I mean we can talk about Smash a little like, bit, I guess, if you guys want. Yeah, but yeah, but I'm back to the point. It was like, I'm like, I'm like, it was a few of those people who were like, I were, I was avid like fans or even like members in their communities, and then to find out that they were just doing dumb shit like that it's just like bruh yeah and then it expanded outside of smash for me like um it expanded into like the the fgc community it expanded into pokemon it expanded into twitch and it was just like bro so many people who i just couldn't fathom yeah making decisions like these were just being just thrown on the train tracks and it was just like damn bro like, i i used to respect these people i used to vouch for these people like i would I would show my my family and friends who don't really have like the the esports, like um like they're not into those things. Yeah. Whenever they would talk to me about that, I'd be like, oh yeah, like I follow this person or I watch this person or oh here watch this quick this moment that happened at Evo and you will understand why I get so so hyped when yeah. stuff happens. And now I don't get that same, I don't get that same enjoyment now because I have to pick and choose. Because like oh you watching Smash It's like oh you get judged yeah, well, yeah. you get judged. Yeah, it's like uh this thing happened. But I don't want to bring up this person because it'll lead to this person and then this thing and then ultimately back into the, the um, you know the the deviants. Yeah. Well, what's up, everybody? So um, we we talked a lot <laughs> in this episode. You can see our topics right there on the screen. Um, so if you didn't know, like I'm Debo's brother, older brother. Um, so that's how I'm. I'm one of the mods there. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen me there. So hi, I'm Slicer. If you guys don't know me, and uh, thank you, Biscuit Head, for the follow. And this yeah, is y'all this... probably know me too. It's your boy Slane. I pop in the Devil's chat um every here and there. I talk to a few of y'all, some of y'all sometimes. So if you ever wanted to know what I look like, here's my face. Yeah, with the longer haircut, because I've seen you with shorter hair. You grew it out. <laughs> yeah, man, I grew my hair this year. Um pretty much just due to COVID. The military relaxed um a lot of the, the hair standards. And I took it and I ran with it. <laughs> like, like I could get in trouble for having this right now, in theory. But a lot of the people that I know, um, they're pretty relaxed about it. And again, with me, just I'm just so good at my job that I've accumulated so many just bonds and friendships with people in the Navy. So they see my hair, they they know I'm getting out soon. They're like, yeah, he deserves this. <laughs> I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna get in trouble for my hair because I've been so helpful just through my career to the people. Yeah. Um, and hey, soldier, what's up? Let's pop in. Um, hey, so like, let's. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, if chat, if y'all don't have any any questions, we'll we'll wrap up the episode. Yeah. Yeah. So any last questions? So we went through this question, which was, "Does money buy happiness?" That was our first question. Then we went to, "Are men allowed to show emotion?" Um, and then we went to a uh, these two tweets that were pretty funny. We we watched a little video and then we we talked about our opinion on it. Um, then we talked about what are some ways you found to keep your relationship successful. We talked about um, not just with your partner or if you're single, how to get um, how to be part of a relationship, but also just friendships. We talked all about that. Then number six was opinion on dating in 2020. And that was a that was a pretty specific one because we're all going through this in 2020 and it's pretty tough, especially to our mental health and all that. Um, so you guys can watch the VOD. I'll upload this to YouTube as well if you guys want to watch us talk about this. Then we talked about how do you expand your social circle. Um, and and that, that was a pretty good conversation. Um, number eight was how, did you, how, did you, how does your high school slash right after high school shape your future? And that was also one of our my, one of my most passionate um, conversations that, that I had because I love to give advice on this. Um, and then number nine, which is any personal or any questions at all. Um, Slane and I, we're open books, so you can ask us anything you want. Um, and if if nobody has any other questions, we're going to wrap it up. So let me know in the next 30 seconds or about there if you have any other questions. So Slane, I have a question for you. So Send what it. what have you been up to during this pandemic, and what do you expect 2021 will be like? Um... 2020 for me was um, a lot of waiting and um, just working. Um, 
I'm the type of person that I like to have a plan for virtually everything in my life. And 2020 just didn't allow me to do that. So it was kind of rough for me. So um, I pretty much, I took this year to just focus on um, preparing myself to get out of the Navy. And um, I tried dating that didn't really work out. So I used that time just for other things. Um, taught myself how to cook a bunch of things this year. But uh, yeah, just mostly I, I spend my time, I go to work, I come home and um, I, I streamed here and there every now and then. So um, a lot of a lot of personal um, just gain and uh, work for me this year, and I'm hoping that 2021 they they get the um, the vaccine thing situated situated, they get the um, the virus under control and they open up everything again because um, it's I can't take an <laughs> I can't do this for another year just being stuck um, unable to just experience life. Yeah, but a lot of. If, mm -hmm. Yeah, if if I do end up just uh, if if we do end up stuck indoors again for another year, I'll be fine. But I would rather not. I, I wanna I wanna travel. I wanna hang out with people. I wanna see my friends again. I wanna go to Vegas again. I wanna grow my hair and let it blow in the wind. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a lot of you in the chat feel this way. So shout outs to you all, 15 viewers right now. Wow. Um, so if you have any questions for us, just shoot shoot us right now. Let us know. Um, Debo, how was your stream? Did you did you make it to top eight? I'm oh wait, wait you you did make it to top eight. What placing did you get in your resurrection bracket? It's crazy how um, we had so much input from the chat today. It was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, this was dope. Yeah, I, right, I, yeah. I, I don't see any anything new, so we can go ahead. We can wrap this up. Well, it's your boy Slane. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitch. I'm definitely going to be streaming a lot more starting um, January next year because I'll be I'll be free from the military. I'll be starting a new job, but I'm going to have a lot more time that I can commit into growing my own personal community and streaming. So that's going to be fun. And I think, um, what's it called? Uh, what was I going to say? Wait, we need Linky. Um... Oh, sh oh, wait. Oh, yeah, I think next week, if we do a podcast, um, it, it'll it be hopefully in the same time. Just follow our Twitter. Our socials are right there, down there. Hopefully, you guys can see that. And the next episode is probably going to be on Slain's stream. So make sure you follow him on Twitter, which is there somewhere. Um, I'll tweet it out and all that. So follow us on Twitter. Um, yo, if we got... If you follow we got, me on Twitter, be warned. <laughs> we got Hedda here. Hedda's late. Hey, listen to it. <laughs> all right. play Among Us after this. All right, so we're probably gonna raid um my boy Scott to be. So thank you all for coming. Um, it was really really cool to get your input, and all the topics we went through, we got through them. Like we had really solid real conversations. So thank you all for that, and thank you, Slain. So I think we'll, we'll yeah, next. Yeah, It's really fun. Next. Uh, yeah, me too. Next week, like I said, hopefully it'll be at the same time. Um, you want to do it on your stream? Um, yeah, we can do it on my stream. Okay, let me just uh, do this. Join the call. I'm in there. Wait, join the call. Though. Yeah, we're going to do that right now. I think we're in the other chat. Yeah, so I'm going to pop over there. Hold on. We got to go ahead and I'm do gonna this host. do this right now. Hopefully it works. Yep, it's working. All right, thank you all for coming, and I'll see you all next week, hopefully, if you guys want to be here and talk to us and DM us any questions you have, um, any topics you want us to go through and all that. So thank you, guys. Bye, Chupi. Bye, Debo. Arnim. Hera. Everybody else. Bye, Slicer. Bye, Colin. Thank you for being here. Rezu. Hey, I love that emote, Rezu. <laughs> Join the call? Yeah, I, w I will. Chill. Um, yeah, let me let me see if, if it, I, I enjoyed my stay. Thank you. GG's. Thank you, Arnim. Alright. Let me double check. 
So thank you guys. This was a really good episode, honestly. Uh, me and Slane, we just came up with the idea and we said, hey, why don't we just do a little podcast? Um, and we're happy that we did it because we had a lot of input from the chat and a lot of opinions being thrown out. And uh, it was very, very enjoyable. We talked all about this. So if you have any questions, personal questions, any questions about this, any questions about what we could talk about in the future, please let us know. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye.